Hello and welcome back. This is Arun Patwarthan and today I will be talking about user interaction in scripts. So far all our scripts have run on their own or with minimal interaction with the user. Basically the script has sent out messages either to a log file or to standard out to inform the user what is happening. But there has been no conversation with the user. The script does not have a mechanism to ask questions to the user and get a response. This is something that would be handy in situations where the script needs to do something on the basis of what the user wants. Hence, user interaction is something that would be very desirable. There are a couple of ways that this could be done. Let us have a look. We will be looking at two ways of interacting with the user. Reading from standard in, presenting a graphical user interface pop-up via Apple script. To start off, let us look at the read command. This is the simplest way to ask for data. The user will have to enter it via the command line. The response is stored in a variable and can be used in the script later on. This allows us to read one line at a time. So how does the command look? It starts with the read command, followed by the prompt. This is where we put the message for the user. We can go on ahead and store that information in the variable and use that variable in the rest of the script. It's that simple. Of course, this assumes that the user is running the script manually and can see the prompt in terminal. Also, it doesn't have the graphical user interface, which is a lot easier to interact with. There are different ways to bring up a graphical message for the user. We will be showing a quick pop-up. In terms of user experience, this is a lot better because there is no need for the user to run the script or have to enter values from the terminal output. The script could be running on a schedule automatically on its own. In order to show the pop-up, we will have to make use of Apple Script. Apple Script is Apple's own scripting language that's part of macOS. Like any other scripting language, it allows us to automate various tasks on macOS. One of the things that it can do is to show the user a pop-up with a message and has the ability to get a response back from the user and that is precisely what we will use. But we are writing shell scripts. How do we invoke an Apple script from our shell script? That is where the OSA script command comes in. It allows us to execute a snippet of an Apple script statement from within a shell script. With all this information in hand, let us first look at the Apple script statement before we add it to our script. We will use the display dialog to show the dialog to the user. Here are some of the details we could provide. The text to show to our user, for example, a question like, what is your name? Optionally, we can also provide a default answer. This makes the input field appear a list of button titles, the button which is selected by default. Optionally, we may even provide a path to an icon to show the display dialog. This produces the dialog we see. Now, if we wanted to find out which button was selected, we can wrap our previous statement in brackets and use the button returned of command. This tells us which button was selected. Similarly, there is also a text return of command to get the value inputted by the user. Let us see how this works. In order to use Apple script within our shell script, we need to use the OSA script command. It executes the provided OSA scripts. The dash E option allows us to provide the statement for the script 
rather than the actual file itself. Remember, this statement has to begin within single tick marks. And that's it. Let us now modify our script to see what we have just covered. We will create a script to include user interaction. And the user interaction that we will be taking or implementing is the one that involves the graphical user interface. So we will need an Apple script statement that will first show a pop-up to the user asking whether they would like to use custom names for the folders or go ahead with the default ones. Therefore, we'll need to find out which button they select. And if they choose the path where they want to provide custom names, then we will need to show multiple pop-ups asking them the names for the different folders and then get hold of those values. We saw earlier that we can use these statements with the help of the OSA script command in a shell script. But first, let's have a look at the Apple script statement itself. We're going to look at the statement that will ask the user to choose between custom folder names and default folder names. A good place to try out Apple script is within script editor itself. It's an application built into macOS and I've got it up here. If I control click on the area, you can see that there are a lot of different options available with templates for pre-written code. So I will go for the dialogue with two buttons because we'll be offering two buttons and it automatically writes the code for you out there. Let me increase the font. So display dialogue, this is where we can put the question. For example, would That's what the user will be prompted with. We have a list of buttons, so we can provide some names for the bust buttons. And we can even provide a nice little icon. With And of course, we can check to see if our statement is correct uh, using this hammer button. And if everything is correct, it will just re-render the statement for us out there. And we can, in fact, test it. So if you hit the play command, it will actually execute the statement for you. And it, this is how your pop-up would look like. If we are interested in finding out which button was clicked, then we would have to wrap this in a button returned off. So button click on the hammer again. Everything looks good. Run click and you can see it's just printing the message of the button that was returned. So we can use this statement in our script. I will copy this and bring our little script up. This is a good place to put our command. You can see that our script is accepting the folder names from the argument, which is an approach we will still maintain because we would like to offer all different options. And at this point, we can offer the user, we can prompt,
we've put a comment in there and now we would use the scosa script command to execute the statement and our little apple script of course we would like to capture the output of this command and store it in a variable so we will use command substitution to get what the user has clicked now if so before that we'll put a comment step 5 Now we will use the if statement to check what the user has clicked and if they've clicked, clicked custom of course we'll have to prompt them to enter the names for the different folders. So if user clicked custom then do something else we will just echo a message out user So there you go, we can put a message out there saying the users just decided to use the default folders. And we close the if with a fee. Now, the next step is to prompt the user for the values they'd like to use as the different folder names. For which again, we will use OSA script and a similar command. So like before, I will use the dialogs option, uh, text input one button, where I could ask the question. Enter the name for folder one. We can provide a default answer and keep, such as buttons. OK, default button is one. We can provide a title. And we could get the path to different applications in which, in this case, let us look for the finder application.
So we get the path to the Finder app icon. We don't strictly have to do this, but it's a nice thing to include there. Click on the hammer button to check if something is okay. And of course, if you have made a mistake, then it will immediately point it out to you here. With the title. With, and I missed the icon here. And everything is fine. And of course, you can run this to check and see what appears. And there you go, that's how it's going to look. And I could say tools. Okay. And now we can use the text returned off to collect what was entered by the user. Similar to the button returned off. Click on the hammer again. There you go. So we can use this snippet of code in our script and use the OZA script command again to execute it. And we will save this output in the tools folder. The variable. Command substitution. There you go. And in fact, we would do something similar for each. This would be changing just the text a little bit. Folder 2, Folder 3. We can keep the default value a little different or you can keep it something else. You can, you're free to choose whatever values you wish out here. And then finally, a similar echo statement to inform that these are the values the users decided to use. And that's it. The rest of the script remains essentially the same because once we've captured the value from the prompt and put it in our variables, we do not have to modify the rest of the script in any way. It all works fine. So this is a nice little addition to our script. The fact that the, now the user can choose and type in the name they want through a graphical user interface. Of course, we have to make a few more changes to our script. Uh, let's change this to update the log out there. One other good place to change would also be the message that is sent to the user when they run the help. So note the user
so we are updating our help with this extra information we can even update this out here And there you go. That's how you can add user interaction into a script. Provides for a nice user experience. Let's look. There's a pop-up. Let's go in for custom. Let's give it a name. Uh, utilities would have been good enough. Tools could be apps and support. So everything looks fine. If I go to the home folder, I can see the apps folder, support and utilities. And if I view the hidden files, I can see the hidden files being created out there. So as you can see, it makes for a really good experience. So how do the two approaches compare? Well, the read command is definitely easier to implement. However, the read command assumes that the user has triggered the script and is in a position to answer from standard in. The GUI approach, on the other hand, can also be used when the script is triggered through some external means, say like a scheduled job. Also, the user will find the graphical experience a lot better and familiar as compared to the command line approach. How we are going to use run the script will play an important role in determining which approach to use. User interaction is an important aspect of shell scripting. It gives us the ability to ask the user for more information while the script is running. What makes this even better is the fact that there is more than one way of achieving this, either through the command line or the graphical user interface. And that is how we can add user interaction in shell scripts. Thank you.